Hello ladies and gentlemen, in this video we'll continue off uh, from yesterday. Yesterday we implemented the type level literals and today we are going to test them out. I'll also show you how they can be used. Let's get started with it. Oh, let's run the extension. As I mentioned, in languages with the Hindley Milner type inference, type level literals wouldn't be too, too useful, but in Spiral they are very much are. So I have to demonstrate uh, how that could work. First, uh, let me just uh, revert the changes to this particular example. Or in fact, let me just copy it, then I'll revert the changes. Because this is, uh, this is actually supposed to be just a simple test, we'll make a new one. something for type literals, maybe like this, uh, not like this. Type lit one. We'll uh, copy the package file as well as the main file from one of these other projects, paste them in. Uh, good enough to start things off. Mm, okay, yeah, we are importing the core. Okay, so let's make a function. You know, f for a, a let's make it uh, something like let's make it a return an unit type. Yeah, and it's uh, actually no. In spiral, instead of unit, we just have the parentheses. And it's complaining that uh, the variable a is unused in the functions type signature. It doesn't matter. We'll do something about that later. Now, um, okay, let's make this, let's make a nominal type, nominal. Um, static array dim l I will uh, well print it out something like uh, mm, l yeah we can't get uh, the terminal variables in in a type of course l Mm. And then something like dim. Oh, uh, now instead of let's make it dim L, we'll make it a static array. Um, Visual Studio Code is actually pretty useful at times because uh, even though Spiral doesn't have autocomplete at the moment, it will automatically make uh, good uh, suggestions. It's quite amazing. Hmm. Let's make this a uh, join point like this and then yeah, it doesn't have to do anything. It can just return a unit. Now, we will have to call this function somehow. Mm, let's do this like f five i thirty two. Why does it tell me that it's failing to parse the token? Mm. All right, right, right. Uh, we need to call it in the real segment. In the top-down segment, we can't actually ap apply the four rows. Oh, sorry about that. Real. Mm. 
Uh, Where's this? Oh, no, no, right? Let's do something like um, five. I just five should be fine. Then the element should be, let's say, an in thirty two. Oops, should be a type. And then we have to create this uh, static array. Maybe let's make it static array. And we actually need to pass in this particular type into it. So how will we do that? By using macros. You know B or maybe A. We'll um, make it actually let's make it uh, mm, let's do this. Actually, yeah, let's do this. Uh, excuse me, just a second. Type case. Did I forget uh, how the tuples are used in Spiral? Uh, okay, now I'm just using the type case construct in order to bind the um, static dimension, the type level literal, as well as the element type, because it's too annoying to keep retyping them all over and over. Okay, now we can just do this. Dim. L and then we can just uh, do something like this mm, this should be the type uh, make array we want we are, we are, I'm just uh, aiming to print out the type. I mean, it won't be, it won't compile to anything correct on the C side. Okay, we can try running this. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Dim. L. Alright, and uh, I'm being a bit uh, stupid right now. Instead of doing this, mm, dim L. And we can th in that case we can just pass everything in here. In fact, we can just do this. Uh, I forgot how to program in my own language, it seems. Now, let's see what gets printed on the C side. Uh, first, uh, let's uh, select the C backend spiral. 
Oh, yeah, it's just selected. Okay, great. Now we'll build it. And what gets printed is... Oh, right, right, right. Um, instead of passing in the variable, it needs to be a type literal, like this. Let's try building it again. Mm. Yeah, it would really be a lot easier if the array size is on, was on the left side. I'm thinking how we could do that, and we could handle that using type defs in the code generator. Or maybe a C++ class with a dimension and an element type. Mm, okay, there is a V0 here. But why is it not getting uh, passed into the method itself? Or, right, maybe, yeah, it's not getting used anywhere here, so... In Q equals X. Yeah, this is how now the type level literals would get printed inside of here. We just need to figure out how to uh, move this part to the right side and then we're basically done. Let me pause for a bit. Let me just make absolutely sure that, uh, in, ca that in fact it cannot be on the left side. We'll build this. No, no, not like this. Mm. I also need to figure out how to, and no, it doesn't really matter. We'll build this. I'll command this out manually. Um. And then let me just paste this into some online C compiler. C online uh, Yeah, it's complaining, it's complaining if we move this to the right side And right now it seems like it compiles. Okay. So yeah, we need uh, we need to, to move the arrays on the right side. One way of uh, taking care of this is to use a type def. Let me show you what I mean. Something like um, type def int r ir oops five l. And then uh, we can just name this as R I R. Yeah, this is a succinct uh, way of doing it. But you know, in this case, uh, the user could you know take a look at the method and see just the I R instead of the particular size for it. So that's uh, not really a good uh, choice for me. Another method would be to, for example, use C++ classes. And how is that done? Something like C++ class... IRCPP... I honestly have no idea how C++ classes work. C++ class... Uh, okay, it needs to be public, field... Okay, we just need to make it a struct in that case. I mean, C++ structs are just uh, classes with the public uh, fields by default. Mm, int r pavel. Okay, something like that. 
And then we deparameterize this using template. Template. Okay, so this is a C compiler, so and we are going to need a C compiler instead. Let me just write it out and then we'll switch to it. Uh, actually, uh, is this a. Yeah, this is a C compiler. Okay, great. Template. Uh, how do templates work? Hmm, template, template, template. Hmm. Oh, it's type name T. I think uh, in C++, uh, type name and uh, class is interchangeable in templates. Mm. Uh, okay, type name el and int dim, something like this. And then el dim and then uh, okay we don't need to name it ARCPP we can just get rid of this ER we'll name this um, int 5L int 5L uh, now does this compile let's try it out Uh, why is it complaining? Expected semicolon after struct definition. Okay. Yeah, it seems uh, like this works. And it would be very pretty easy to generate a type like this for an array. We can just, you know, put it on the same line. Um, or actually... No, we can just uh, generate this IR thing at the top level. And then... Uh, have the type use it. Let me think about this for a bit. Uh, let's go with this approach. If the HLS compiler complains later, we'll, we'll, we'll just uh, move to a more intricate method. For now, let's do this. Thankfully, C++ is uh, not space sensitive. I mean, white space sensitive. So we can just do this. Let's go back to the spiral. Um, into the spy file, then we'll do a global and then uh, do this. Now we can just in this case do mm, let's make it an array then array it should be Let's uh, uh, switch this to. It should be dimension and the element. And then. Uh, right. Array. Element. I mean dimension. Mm, close. Now we have this uh, static array. We have this global. This this will place the template at the start of the file. I mean, uh, later we'll put it uh, directly into the code generator, but for now let's do it like this as a test. And then... Mm, let's just uh, try building it. Oh, what comes out? Alright, this is also a C compiler. I need a C++ one. Never mind that for now. Oh, let's try compiling this. We'll just comment this out.
Yeah, and the and this compiles. This is uh, very good. If we, for example, change the something like um, this to the static size to something like thirty-two, it can even be. Uh, no, we'll leave it as thirty-two bit integer. Then we'll make this something like a tuple of uh, float 32 in 32 and then we can make it oh no no no, no. this the element size isn't good I made a mistake it should be printing a, tu a tuple somehow but it's not doing that okay we'll have to fix that in the code generator never mind that for now The problem is that I never really intended to use uh, tuples in inside the types uh, to be, to begin with. So that's uh, that's why the behavior the behavior is like this. Spiral can have spiral has its own uh, uh, array uh, tuple of arrays uh, uh, type that I that I did uh, in the past. Let me show you just for a moment. Spiral. And I demonstrated how this could be done as a part of the upman backend. And this thing uh, actually shows how to do a um, structure of arrays and data type. And so this thing uh, actually demonstrates it to its, a, to, to its a mixed Python and a C++ code. Well, it's just a little thing. We will be Okay, the, the HLS compiler, in fact, if, you, if it has something like a struct of arrays, it will, in fact, uh, uh, disaggregate them. So you get a structure of arrays uh, natively. And the, I mean, this is uh, qu quite uh, quite cool. You can also use a pragma to aggregate it and use it uh, as a tuple, as it is. The only exception is uh, on, the, on functions on the top level. That is where this uh, structure of arrays that we have uh, as a part of the li spider library would uh, be useful. Well, let's go back to this. I'm going to do a whole separate backend uh, just for uh, the HLS. I won't be reusing the C one because I don't need the reference counting functionality. So it's, it would just be getting in, in, in my way. I don't want to uh, maintain two, two, thing, two different things. Let me just uh, show how instead of this make array, let me just show how the array could be created properly. Uh, oh, just a second. I actually don't remember how C++ template classes could be created. Oh, create an object, my class, my obj, and then you assign to it. Uh, so this is how you can cre create a local one. Okay. No problem. Mm. Okay, let's make it uh, like this then. It won't be the same as... Uh, It actually needs to be provided a variable, uh, and I think I have this uh, functionality to insert a, a type specifically in the C backend for things like this. Because in the past I needed to, to you know, write something like uh, um, a regular array int uh, qva3. And uh, I needed to actually declare this in the, in the code, even though I didn't 
even to derase themselves, I could have just uh, passed, in, passed along into functions as pointers. But uh, the problem here is that uh, the pointer, passing pointers uh, into local functions in, is forbidden in uh, the HLS C++ uh, target. So the, this, is what, what, uh, this is the reason why I'm going through all this uh, trouble of putting in uh, static d dimensions. Uh, let's try it like this. Let's see whether this builds properly. Uh, yes, it does. Or maybe it doesn't. Uh, we'll overwrite it and then build it again. I scribbled on it, so it ended up causing trouble. Oh, here is a print. Here it is printing a tuple properly. Two point zero. All right. Okay. Let, let's just uh, fix it, this thing. Mm. Where is the C backend? Uh, macro uh, two point I okay and then um, at the at the type level uh, Y macro Yeah, whatever the case, it will make a more s sense that the types get printed the same way here and uh, in, in, on the term level. Uh, tuple tie. Let's publish it. Is TypeScript messing with us again? Yes, it is. Excellent. Now you, see, you now you can see that the uh, the the tuples are being printed properly inside the types. Well, this is pretty good. But unlike uh, C, for example, C++ uh, has its own uh, native tu uh, tuple type. I think um, let's let's do a quick uh, sh search for it. It also has tuple destructuring and various other good things. Yeah, this tuple. So instead of that uh, struct, instead of uh, printing a struct for every tuple, it might be more readable to use a tuple like this here. And this is something we could do in the C++ backend. Yeah, I mean, 
even if it's something like uh, Q C++ or a regular uh, um, backend for the CPU, I did have the option of making it uh, C++ from, from the start, but I decided against it. In particular, the reason for that is because the way um, C++ does, does uh, allocation and deallocation, it calls it uh, RAI. R -I 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 -I, R -A -I -I. And uh, this is uh, this has a local scoping. So, for example, if you allocate some kind of class, for example, here, it would uh, deallocate it be before the return. I mean, at the, at the return point, or maybe at the last point where it uh, occurs in the scope. I'm not, I'm not uh, completely sure. And uh, that's actually a problem because uh, it would end up blocking uh, the tail uh, recursion in the language. So I, I, I had to do my own uh, reference counting scheme. So for that reason, I picked uh, C as the target backend. But uh, HLS C++ doesn't uh, support uh, tail recursion or any kind of recursion to, uh, to begin with. So that's a moot po point. I can make a C++ backend and I get all the benefits of it in the HLS backend. I mean target. Now I mean yeah, this is this is pretty good. Uh, let's uh, let's uh, just see whether this compiles. What's going on? Is it compiling this? It's taking a while. Okay, it's really taking a while. I need to restart. Try this one. We'll run. Yeah, and it finished with exit code zero, so which means there aren't any type errors. Great. I think I, re I remember reading that in the HLS compiler, the static uh, methods aren't al allowed. But I don't know how, the, how that uh, will interact with uh, the inline attribute. Uh, who cares? Okay. With this, I think uh, we got uh, the type level literals uh, into perfectly added into the into the language. Let's just uh, do a few more tests. Whether some things work. Uh, let's do. Let's put, let's pass in an element, a symbol. Yeah, this gets printed properly. And this is, uh, you know, so we can use, uh, so, we, so we can uh, access uh, enums in C++ types. Suppose uh, we passed in a string, how would that get printed? As a regular character, 
but uh, the strings specifically, it doesn't seem like it uh, supports them at the type level. <laughs> we'll have to do something about that. I mean, it should just be a token. Let's uh, let's uh, go back to to the code. This uh, this is something we need to fix in the parser. Uh, read the uh, venue. Token venue. I mean, uh, why is it not uh, reading a string? It's weird. Uh, let's just uh, find all references. I mean, shouldn't they be saying which uh, suffix it is? Oh no, 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 it doesn't need. I mean, it's it parses it into a specific uh, value. Uh, never mind. Now where are this where is the find references? It's in the pattern, read value. Uh, and they have a read the string specifically it seems. Oh yeah, it needs a string open and then it needs to read the text and then it needs to uh, close it. Okay, we need to, we need to use the read string. What is this read the text thing? Uh -huh, okay, we have the es escape the tokens and we have to handle inside strings. We have to handle new lines, tabs, r carry returns, as well as many other tokens, especially. Okay, now okay, I get it. Okay, swallow so return route till it. Mm, okay, read the string route till it. Mm, why is this a problem? Range, string, range. Why do we have three ranges in here? Uh, okay, let's do. Fun. ABC A or yeah, it needs to be a little string. Um, this uh, this particular operator, it it just. Uh, takes the beginning of the range on the left side and the end of the range on the right side and um, puts them together. 
Oh, we need this. Do we need anything else, maybe? For passing type level literals? I don't think so. Mm, let's try building it. We'll cause TypeScript ahead of time. Maybe in the next version it will get uh, fixed. I mean, it worked properly in the previous versions. Seems like it's still giving us trouble. Uh, no, wait, 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 wait. Oh, what did I do? I mean, yeah, th this is just in, in the unary operator. We also need it uh, in the root type, I think. In fact, uh, we don't need it here. Root type. All right, I can just click here. Lit string. This should notice. And in fact, uh, you know, what I said earlier, we, we, we actually do need it. Unary. Yeah, why not uh, have it here? Since we are having, since we do have regular values, uh, let's uh, try building it again. I mean, publishing. Uh, I need to close this and this. Now let's run it again. Yeah, now we are not getting an error anymore. Let's see what gets what gets printed on the in the output. Yeah, it, a lot gets printed, in effect. Oh, strangle it for QEA. Oh, this is really... If you look at the type literal, the way strings are printed is a. S yeah, it's literal like this. Because, you know, in the C backend, uh, I have a reference counter the strings instead of, you know, 
as naked uh, arrays so that's causing the trouble here and uh, it doesn't really matter too, too much in this case nobody's going to pass in strings into a template if they do it's their own fault oh uh, no let me think of it mm. Okay, let's just do a bit more testing. For example, you know, F. If we apply it like this, something like. Oh, this is print the strings. Expected one of variable literal. Oh, did we not publish it? Uh, unary op you should be offering to read the, the strings in addition to I think uh, I just want to ch check this out and then we'll conclude that uh, that implementing the type level literals is a success. Mm. This is oh, why is this happening? Yeah, it's doing a term expression. All right, I am so silly. Let's move this uh, up here so that I can see it better in the future.
Hmm, not bad. Oh, this was a nice and uh, short video, at least uh, as far as uh, live streams are concerned. We added the type level literals to the language. But before we can uh, move on, we also need to create the HLS C++ backend. And in addition to that, we need to change the join points. Uh, the, join point, the join points right now in Spiral all get printed as method 1, method 2, method 3, method 4, and so on. But instead, because uh, the HLS backend, uh, or rather the HLS compiler itself, uh, provides pretty extreme diagnostics on, on performance, having that kind of naming scheme would make things very confusing. So in order to get the full use out of it, the method names need to be better. At the least, uh, they should have they should have some relation to the uh, to the name of the letter statement or the in all state statement. So that's uh, what we are going to do first, and then we are going to get to work on the HLS backend. And on, once we do that, we'll be able to start the stage functional programming in Spiral playlist. Stay tuned. <laughs> 